NASA has a new plan to reach the south pole of the moon. The agency is again partnering with Firefly Aerospace, which so far is the only American company to have successfully landed a spacecraft on the moon with their Blue Ghost 1 mission in March of this year. Successfully reaching the moon's south pole has proven difficult for NASA and their commercial partners. Another American company, Intuitive Machines, has attempted to land there twice in the past two years and failed on both occasions. The Firefly Blue Ghost previously touched down in the Americrisium region on the moon's northern hemisphere, a relatively easy task compared to the rugged terrain and deep shadows of the South Pole. But NASA clearly believes that they are up for the task and they are trusting Firefly with at least two high-value payloads for this trip. Blue Ghost will carry a pair of new lunar rovers to the South Pole. One is called Moon Ranger. It's being developed by NASA's AMES Research Center in collaboration with Carnegie Mellon University. Moon Ranger is about the size of a carry-on suitcase, and it is designed to autonomously explore the lunar South Pole in search of water ice. The rover's stereo camera system will build 3D maps of the lunar surface that allow it to operate with 100% autonomy even when there is no communication back to Earth. The second rover on this mission is being developed in Canada. The as-yet-unnamed vehicle is a similar luggage-sized four-wheeled platform that will seek out new discoveries on the lunar surface. It is the Canadian Space Agency's first major contribution outside of their namesake robotic arms. This one will also be looking for signs of water ice on the moon's south pole in addition to measuring radiation levels and temperature changes at the south pole. What's cool about the Canadian rover is that it uses solar power but also has a big enough battery to dive deep into permanently shadowed craters on the moon and operate in total darkness for up to an hour. These are the locations where we are most likely to find large deposits of water. This also means that unlike most rovers, this one should be able to survive the 14 days of night and reactivate for another lunar day of exploration. The Firefly Blue Ghost itself will carry three scientific instruments. One is the Laser Ionization Mass Spectrometer. It's going to use a robotic arm and a scoop to collect a sample of regolith material, and then blasts it with a laser to break the material down and get a super detailed look at its composition down to the atoms and isotopes. Just like previous American lunar landers, Blue Ghost will be equipped with NASA's stereo cameras for Lunar Plume Surface Studies instrument. Part of their ongoing study into how spacecraft interact with the light, dusty regolith that covers the surface of the moon. And like other landers as well, this one will carry NASA's laser retroflector array, which basically allows them to shoot the lander with a laser beam from Earth that will bounce all the way back and provide a super accurate location reading for where Blue Ghost ends up. This South Pole mission is scheduled for launch as early as 2029 and will be the most ambitious test for Firefly so far. But it won't be their only follow-up trip to the moon this decade. Even before the success of Blue Ghost 1, NASA had already selected them for more of their commercial lunar payloads. The next mission is set to launch next year and will send Blue Ghost to the far side of the moon, also often referred to as the dark side of the moon. Now, it's not actually dark, it's just not visible from our perspective on Earth, but it's still very different from our familiar near side. Blue Ghost 2 will deliver a European communications satellite called Lunar Pathfinder into orbit around the moon before heading down to the far side region. Once there, it's going to deploy a payload called the Lunar Surface Electromagnetics Experiment Night. This is going to perform radio astronomy using the moon as a shield to block out radio interference from the Earth and get a clear observation of the early universe. And then for Blue Ghost 3 in 2028, Firefly will visit a mysterious region of the moon's northern hemisphere known as the Greithoisen Domes, a geological formation that has puzzled observers for decades. Most of the moon's geology appears to have been formed by thin basaltic lava, 
It flows over the surface like oil and doesn't tend to leave behind any clear, defined features. But these domes appear to have been formed by a thick silicate lava that flows more like peanut butter and hardens into dense granite-like rock. The mystery here is that silicate lava only exists on Earth in places where you have a collision of tectonic plates in the presence of water. The moon doesn't have tectonic plates or liquid water, so these domes really shouldn't exist according to what we know, which means there's probably a known unknown at play. So that's what the Blue Ghost 3 is going to try and figure out. To do that, the lander will be equipped with six scientific instruments, some of which will be attached to a lunar rover and a yet unnamed industry provider. Now, we're not sure who that will be, but we do have this very interesting new rover design that was just released as a partnership between the American companies Interloon and Astrolab. It's designed to locate and collect a rare element on the moon known as Helium-3 which has potential as a fuel source for nuclear fusion that could provide the Earth with unlimited energy. The vehicle is based on Astrolab's Flex rover platform, which will tow along the resource harvesting device being developed by Interloon. Before they jump straight into mining the moon for nuclear fuel, the two companies will launch a test rover as soon as the end of this year. That will be carried to the surface by the Astrobotic Griffin lander, which is scheduled for launch in November on a Falcon Heavy rocket. For their first mission, Interloon is equipping the Flex rover with a special camera that was developed in partnership with NASA. It's going to help the company estimate how much Helium-3 is present in the lunar regolith. Essentially, what the rover is looking for will be minerals that are rich in titanium. Those are believed to be correlated with the presence of Helium-3, so if we find one, then we've probably found the other. Once they have a better idea of just how much Helium-3 they can expect to find, Interloon is planning to send a follow-up rover in 2027 that will be focused on sample collection in what they call ideal harvesting sites. The company is also working on identifying potential customers for the Helium-3 resources that could be brought back from the moon on future expeditions. In May, Interloon announced a partnership with the US Department of Energy, which has agreed to purchase up to 3 liters of Helium-3 by 2029. And at the same time, Interloon also announced a deal with a quantum computing startup called Maybell that wants to purchase thousands of liters of Helium-3 annually from 2029 to 2035. That demonstrates some of the use cases for Helium-3 outside of just nuclear fusion. Demand is growing for quantum computers, national security, and medical imaging as well. And while there is some Helium-3 that could be extracted from the Earth, the only way to meet projected demand in the future will be from the Moon. As of right now, Interloon is still a very small startup with a staff of about 25 people, but they are positioning themselves to become the first US-based commercial mining operation on the moon, and they are not stopping at just Helium-3. Interloon wants to harvest industrial metals, rare earth elements, and water to support a long-term human presence on the moon. How exactly they are going to do that is still unclear. The company says that they have a patent pending technology that allows them to deploy smaller and lighter technology to the lunar surface that requires 10 times less power than the other systems to operate. That promise alone has already earned the company over $18 million in funding, and if anything, this is probably just the first indication of a lunar gold rush that is soon to come if companies like Firefly can finally provide a reliable and affordable landing platform to get equipment onto the moon in any location we choose, then the resource industry is going to follow close behind. Of course, scientific exploration is going to come first, for now, but make no mistake, there is money on the moon and people are going to figure out a way to get it.